Hey everyone, Jason here from C-Squared Racing. And I wanted to bring you a video this week that was a little bit different, something that somebody had suggested that we do, and I thought it sounded like a, a bit of a fun idea. And that was to take a look at uh, some racing movies that maybe people weren't aware of. And I have this one in my collection that my wife got me that I thought would be a, a really interesting one to start with. And that is 43, The Richard Petty Story. Um, I don't know anything about this. As you can see, the plastic wrap is still on. I have not watched this. I thought it'd be kind of fun maybe to watch something that I haven't seen before. And so you can see it with me. We're not going to show the whole video, uh, but I'm going to show maybe some highlights and, and give some of my thoughts as I, as I watch the movie. Uh, and then I'll give you some information in the description below the video. Uh, if you want to check this out, I, I think this is still available. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll, you know, put a link to the uh, to the information where you can get this if you'd like to see it. So, um, so we're gonna check this out together. This particular DVD comes uh, dual packed. It's also got a copy of the Wrestler. Uh, so that's an interesting one too. It's not racing related, but maybe if uh, you like pro wrestling, uh, you want to check out the second the second video on here. But we're gonna focus on the the Richard Petty one. Um, so, yeah, let's uh, let's get into it. Let's see. Let's see what this is. Well, welcome to 43, the Petty yeah, story. For six years. Why? Don't matter why. We're we'll throwing right into the action here, right off the bat. Um, just some background on this film. It's from 1972. It uh, it has a lot of actors playing roles, people from his uh, from Richard Petty's life. Uh, but Richard Petty does play himself. Uh, Maurice Petty and Dale Inman also play themselves in the film. And uh, the incomparable Darren McGavin, the father from A Christmas Story, is playing Richard Petty's father, Lee Petty. Uh, so those are kind of the big names in this. Uh, but this was done in 72. Interesting uh, that it's one of these situations where someone who isn't at the end of their career decides to do their life story. Uh, Richard Petty had a career that lasted into the 90s. Uh, so to be doing a film about his life story in 72 left a lot on the table to be told later. Um, you know, you see that sometimes with musicians that'll do two albums, then do greatest hits, and then they do four more albums after that, um, if they're good enough. I guess I guess success is never guaranteed, and uh, you shouldn't assume there's going to be more to the story sometimes. But in this case, uh, Richard Petty was... Uh, was not even close to the end of his career when this film was made. So, um, I, we're seeing an accident here. Um, I don't know a lot about Richard YouTube, Petty's uh, life story. I haven't seen this before. I haven't read any books about him. Um, most of his career was before I was old enough to really follow NASCAR. I didn't really get into NASCAR until probably the late 80s, early 90s, when he was really towards the end. Um, but, uh, yeah, we've got an accident here. You know, that is true. It's, you know, sometimes in racing when a driver gets injured, uh, or, or if a crew member gets injured, you just have to keep going. You can't uh, just stop. The car keeps going. Racing's been good to the petties. Very good. Your news. I think you owe me some answers. Now, what we got here is a matter of a possible concussion. Now, Richard may snap out of it and just shuffle out of here. On the other hand, he may not. Until I know which way it's going, I don't owe you nothing. Well, that's the end of this conversation. What I am and where I'm from is my concern and my concern. So it's interesting in this scene, he's talking about Richard Petty possibly having a concussion. And you remember, this is back in 1972. Recently, we've had a lot of discussion about concussions in motorsports with the situation that Dale Earnhardt Jr. has gone through, uh, ultimately having to retire from the sport because of repeated concussions. Uh, you don't think of it being a big issue back in the 70s. Back then, it was sort of a, a walk-it-off mentality. And, you know, you just figured you had a headache and you're a little woozy and 
you were seeing some stars, but it cleared up and then you just went back to normal. So it's interesting here, you know, hearing someone I like it, a little, uh, talk about, on that engine. you know, yeah, sure, a little bit a, his driver there. having a concussion and, and that possibly being something that would affect his career. Um, you just didn't think that that was something that they, that they were worried about back then uh, as being a long-term injury. So, oh, yeah. you know, this movie indicates that at least uh, at some level they were aware that concussions were dangerous even back in the 70s. So, which, <laughs> you know, 30, 40 years into the future, um, we're still struggling to get people to take concussions seriously. So, First car I ever bought! So this is yeah. Richard First Petty's father, bought, not the real guy, Darren yeah, McGavin playing him. Richie, don't mess it up. It was a 28 Ford. Uh, uh, tore it down from uh, firewall to radiator. Got about another 10 to 15 miles an hour out of it, too. Get out. What? I said get out. Hey, my bad side. What? My bad ear. Yeah, you gotta love these old cars because we're, we're jumping back into. I'm not sure what year this is supposed to take place in, but you know, filming this in the 70s, obviously these are cars that are, would belong more in the 40s and 50s. And you, you always wonder, you know, where do they find the cars? Uh, nowadays, movie studios can, can build the car if they can't find them. Uh, but they'll generally a lot of times reach out to collectors, clubs, car clubs and find people that have those classic cars and use them in movies. Um, I, I know people that have had cars that were used in photo shoots, TV shows. I, I, I have a friend whose car got used in an episode of Top Gear. Um, so they will a lot of times actually find someone's car. And sometimes in the course of filming these things, those cars get really seriously damaged. Uh, my friend's car that was used on Top Gear uh, got a lot of paint damage. They were pretty rough on the car. Of course, they took care of it and fixed it. Uh, but you wonder when you see a film like this, you see these old classic cars that even when this movie was made, these would have been classic cars. Uh, and they're running one right into a building, right on cue. You know, were these actually people's cars? Um, you know, where did they find these? I, as a car guy, I get interested in that, knowing the story behind the cars that are used in films. People know the history of NASCAR it comes from you know, the moonshine you know, taking those cars back in the Prohibition era and then souping them up so that they could run away from, from police and then that eventually evolved into them racing against each other. Uh, so they were, a lot of the, the early uh, pit crews and drivers back in the early days of NASCAR were very good at working on cars, very good at souping them up and, and modifying them to, to be faster uh, and, and to be you know, handled better and just to be able to uh, not only get away from police but also to, to win those bragging rights contests. Um, so there was a ton of innovation back then. Um, nowadays, everything is so standard. Everything has to be done to a specific set of rules. Back then, guys could really be imaginative and, and come up with whatever they could come up with. It's a very jaunty soundtrack. Hey, hey, my, my name is, is Petty, Lee Petty, a in North Carolina. Curtis Cross! Hey, you from uh, Quebec? Montreal, Baton Rouge. I move around a lot. Yeah, I can tell. Oh, hey, this is my boy, Richard. Someday I want a porch where I can Hang just on, be all right. sit on the front porch in a rocking chair. I've never, well, since I was about five years old, I've, I haven't had a house where you could do that. The other thing I think about when I see these scenes with the old cars in them, uh, you know, the suspension and the handling and the tire technology back then wasn't what it is today, and you see them driving right on the edge of control down what is essentially dirt roads. It must have been extremely difficult <laughs> to keep these cars under control. So. Have a way of putting things, Maurice. Come on. 
So that's a young Maurice Petty right there. And I'm, I'm assuming that's Richard Petty's mother. That's how to make an entrance. The ain't you. Ain't you beauty, Joe? Where you been, Lee? The ordinary stock model beefed up 60 horsepower. I tell you, they, we left them revenues like they were standing still. Isaac Curtis. It's funny seeing him get excited about 60 horsepower. Nobody would have caught it. That, that Curtis, he drives like there's no tomorrow. Curtis? Curtis Cross, the former owner of this lovely little piece of machinery. Are you going to tell me where you've been, Lee? What, for, former owner? Uh. What did you say that former owner for, Lee? So, tip the guys. Well, because it's the truth. Well, I don't know buy you a souped-up car well, and not tell your wife well. about it. My father made that mistake one time, bringing home a brand-new Trans Am. Uh, not only did he not discuss it with the family, but he traded in my mother's uh, van, which she loved very much, uh, for the Trans Am. So the van was never to be seen again, and we had a new Trans Am in the driveway. And I, as a small child at the time, probably four or five years old, absolutely loved it. Um, but... Uh, my well, mother did not let that did not let that rest for a very very long oh, time. Well, uh, it took my, my father many many years you uh, this, son? to make Is up for that. Really so yours? don't don't do yeah, that, guys. Yeah, don't. Don't. <laughs> Just a cat have a <laughs> Talk things over with the family like before you make major purchases. Uh, Look here, one hundred and eighty horsepower. How much? One hundred and eighty horsepower. Got special carbs on it. Look at that, and and a special ground valve. What did you pay for it, Lee? $300. 300 And a car for $300. What are you going to do with this car? Yeah, I showed you the suspension. Now, look, look. See? Right underneath there, they got those tie bars in there. I keep them healing down on the curves, you know? Lee, what are you going to do with this car? What are you going to do with it, Lee? We're going racing! Oh, no! That's what I'm Going racing? <laughs> Lee, the hat is on fire! What'd you say, honey? Hey, Lee, the house is on fire. The house is on fire. Why didn't you say <laughs> something? Oh, uh... Golly, look at that. The house is on fire. Now it's really on fire. I think you missed your window to put that out. You know, something I've never experienced in my life is, is dealing with a, a fire in my home. And uh, I, I absolutely cannot imagine what that's like to see everything you own just go up and smoke like that it, so it's fun. something that uh it's it's very scary to imagine that ever happened well, I and, and what you would do well i mean now now i gotta go racing. no so we gotta get ourselves a new house clothes we own a truck, remember? So Lee's plan at this point is that That's faster. through racing they'll make enough money to you know, build a new house and buy back everything. So for them at this point, racing is, is survival. It's, it's not just something to do for fun. They need the money. You know, so in the early days of racing, we're so used nowadays to seeing these, these pre-built tracks with the real smooth roads and bank turns and everything like that. A lot of early racing, especially I guess you could kind of consider this sort of grassroots for the time, but even at higher levels um, of, of racing, it was still public roads. Early Formula One Grand Prix were done on, on public roads. And sure, we have street circuits now. Uh, but it's much different. It's, it's their for the house. surfaces are taken 20. care of and they're manicured and, and you know they do as much as they can oh, to keep uh, the, the surface well, as smooth as possible. Half You're not going to have a pothole in the middle of a, a uh, Formula One course. Hey, but you know if you go back to say the, yeah, I know the, you know, the early days of Formula One racing, you know there's there's pictures. Day. If you go back and watch well, some of our videos on, on Formula One history. You know, there's a picture in there of a, of a car well, that's crashed into a tree on the side of a road. Uh, lost wages are about six. I figure this win has cost us about $2,000. Well, 
Man, so they won the race, but it cost them so do. much to compete that they lost money. And, and that's a real thing in racing. Uh, to this day, a, a lot of teams end up losing money because the money they have to invest just to compete is less than what they get in, in return from winning. So, um, you know, even today in, in series like NASCAR, modern NASCAR, the series itself takes a lot of the winnings. So the, the drivers don't take home. It's not like an NFL quarterback where they get you know, multi-million dollar salaries. Uh, that's, that's not the way it is, in, in, even in modern racing, for a lot of drivers. So it's very easy to, to get into the sport and invest everything you have and, and, and not earn it back. The, the old Junior Johnson quote, the best way to make a small fortune is to start with a large one. Even here you see a, an early bank track, and it's still just covered in dirt. A, a far cry from the smooth asphalt paved uh, super speedways. Is that car supposed to just be rolling back? <laughs> I guess that's an early driver swap. So in the history of car chases, where do we think this falls? Maybe between French Connection and Ronin? Somewhere in the middle? I'm not sure what he was trying to do there. That's going to take the value of that car down. I like how he started laughing before Steve, Curtis resurfaced from the water. He didn't know if he was coming back up or not. You follow me! I'd rather follow you than follow you! <laughs> so now we flash you know, back forward. Now about. we're back at the hospital after Richard's accident. I never will get used to the way you two handle things like this. Something I've always noticed... Well, Anytime you watch a movie here, where somebody gets hurt and they have to go to the emergency room, there's never anyone else in the emergency room. Hey, I'm sorry. I thought it would be a good idea to get you on the yearbook staff so you could break in and meet the kids since you're new here. I didn't think they'd work you to death after school. So I'm guessing this is another flashback to her background and how she got to know Richard, maybe. I just told you. What? Why I got you on the yearbook staff? To meet the kids, because you're new here. Yes, I am. Yes, you am what? What? Okay, which one is it? You like them tall or short? The tall one on the right. Petty. Who? Richard Petty. Lee Petty is his father. Oh. Uh, Lee Petty, the race car driver. Oh. You want some advice? Okay. Forget it. Why? Because you ain't got the right equipment. I mean, you got nice lines, kid, but you ain't got a carburetor or a transmission or whatever. What? All Richard Petty ever talks about is race cars, he and Bobby. Nothing else? If Richard doesn't but talk about you got cars, nice he lines, just doesn't but... talk. Believe me, we've all <laughs> But you're talked. not a sports car. Oh, I don't know nothing about race cars. My daddy drives over 50, I get sick. I, I heard one person say one time that okay. you know, one of the hardest things is finding... Finding a mate that huh? doesn't mind being number two in your life. Um, no, he's you, know, you, you think that all oh, family always comes first. But for a lot of people, in order to get to where they, they want to be in the sport, in order to get to the top, they have to dedicate themselves so much that 
that sometimes they put relationships well, in the back there. Not always. It's, it's going to differ from person to person. Sure. Um, but that is something I've heard that some drivers do, that they have to put their career first and that they'll make time for relationships later. Listen, Mr. Petty, I know your reputation as a race driver is just wonderful, but you have to understand I don't think I got nothing to worry about. Yeah, well, I appreciate your concern, Mr. Phillips. But you understand, of course, that I never think about or worry about my own driving. Uh, well, then, I want you to drive it. I want you to drive my car in this race right here today, now. Well, I, I don't know. No, I want you to drive it. I got every confidence, Mr. Petty, that me and you are going to make a lot of money. Well, no, no, not not if you're scared, no. Uh, but I ain't scared, Mr. Finn. I ain't scared a bit. I want you to drive my car. Well, really? I mean, you I'd sure be, you sure? I'd be proud if you drove my car. Are you sure now? I'm sure, Mr. Petty. I'm sure. I'm sure you're going to drive my car just fine. I wonder how many drivers have had that experience of having a car owner beg them to drive their car. Usually you're fighting for opportunities and uh, if anyone's begging it's the driver who's begging someone to uh, sponsor their ride or to, or to build a car for them things like that that's, that's most most of the experience so. would you like to know what i learned well i'm going to tell you what i learned i learned that your car ain't fit for race it's too heavy the suspension is like a baby buggy. It sucks oil like a hog, and it drinks gas like a drunken sailor. It drifts in the corners like a rowboat, and it steers like a pregnant truck. Imagine you killed that thing. But other than that, the it car was good, was right? Cutter blow to hell. <laughs> I've called these meetings so us driver can get together, so we can get a voice with NASCAR. Now they're nice people, and on we're all growing. There's a lot of money in it, especially now with uh, factory sponsorship and all. Now, if we don't kill ourselves with crazy driving, we might all share in it. I heard that in there. Apparently, you aren't listening. I heard it. I just think it's stupid. I'm on the track. I don't intend to worry about any union brother in the car behind me. Or in front of you? Anywhere. Racing out a team sport, Petty, was never meant to be. The track's one of the few places left in this world where the man with a guts for it can take it off. So at this point in the story, this is when the NASCAR drivers were getting together and starting to worry about things like safety and thinking about going through the process of, of actually unionizing. You know, th this is something that continued um, throughout, uh, you know, throughout the history of the sport. Good luck tomorrow. Uh, this idea of the drivers coming together. Uh, other sports, baseball, basketball, hockey, football, and more established unions. Uh, that wasn't so much the case in NASCAR. Wait a minute. Now you just hush up. Just hush up. Now it has been discussed. It is all settled. No, it is not settled. And it is not. And will you quit turning your bad ear to me? Every time we argue, he turns his bad ear. I first started noticing it about five years. Now I wonder what the actual age difference was in this scene between McGavin and Petty. Yes, smart aleck uh, kids. <laughs> It's simply a matter of good I don't know how old Richard is supposed to be in this scene. Come in, they share the prize money without much closer to attract the sponsor. It don't matter which of us comes in first in which car. Now, I know you two better than anybody else in the whole world. And I know it is not going to be that simple. You can see in this day and age that uh, aerodynamics had not yet become a major concern. You really don't care. You really don't care. Sure, I care I didn't win the race. Well, I'm going to get him next time. Here you want to bet there, boy. <laughs> You're crazy. You're both crazy. The whole lot is crazy. You know, I think you better marry that girl. What are you yelling about? You know what day it is. Tuesday the 21st. Oh, 
wedding day. I know that, honey. Then what are you doing out here? This thing's supposed to turn 5,000 RPMs, and I can't get it up about 4,500. I'm trying to make adjustments on the carburetor. Richard, our guests are here. <laughs> Honey, I know that, but if I don't get this thing running, we'll come back in. So it's their wedding day, and he's in, he's in their the shop working right. on the I car. I just want you to get in the house and marry me. Honey, I got every intention. I know they just named your rookie of the year. I <laughs> like know the wedding is, is one of the things on his to-do list for the day. Not necessarily the number one thing. I'm not going to show you with a race car on my wedding day. <clears throat> It'll only take a couple of minutes. Richard, get in the house and get dressed. Hi. Uh, Long day. Everybody had a good time. There's some punch left downstairs. I was waiting for that. <laughs> She's getting ready for the wedding night, and he goes out to the garage and starts working on the car again. Uh, it was the carburetor. Uh, I, I got the RPMs up now. It's, uh, it's turning 5,000 now. In years to come, someone will ask, someone always does, about my wedding night. Well, I'm thankful I'll be able to look them straight in the eye and tell them that on my wedding night, the most important night of my life, Richard did finally get his RPM up. A couple things to notice here, you know, a, a really early depiction of the Daytona 500. Uh, one, the fact that the catch fences on the outside of the track did not go all the way around the track. So if you had an accident up against the outside wall, you could actually flip over the wall and go outside the track. Uh, there's a guardrail, you'll see, uh, but no fence. Still had the big one there. Another thing was you'll see in a lot of shots, uh, ooh. you'll see in a lot of shots when they're in the car, they're, you know, they're not wearing fire suits at this point in history. Um, they're basically wearing just cotton suits. They might, they might be overalls, they might be a, a shirt, and a, you know, a two-piece of shirt on top. You see, there looks like he's just wearing a button-down shirt and a pair of pants. Um, they weren't completely oblivious to the risk of fire. But the idea of having you know, the modern Nomex-based fire suits, that was, uh, that was years away from being a reality in sports. I forget about full-face helmets and Hans devices and, and wraparound seats, none of that. But none of that was happening at this point in history. So you see. Did he really crash? Yes, honey. You could say that. So you see Richard, you know, having a, an accident, flipping over, and the car bursting in flames. Something else you didn't see back then was the self-healing uh, fuel cells. So when you had an accident, it was very common for the, 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 the fuel to spill out and, and catch on fire. Uh, here we see an example of the car going up over the wall. Uh, just like I was mentioning before, no, no catch fence. Uh, later on, there was a big accident at, at Talladega. If you have a chance to watch our video on the history of the Talladega curse, we talk about where a car actually flipped over the wall. Uh, a lot like that, actually. And, uh, and, and that was what actually got them to go ahead and start putting the fence in there on the track, which was good not only to keep the cars in the track and help the drivers stay safe, but as the, stadium, or as the uh, tracks were getting bigger in terms of seating capacity, 
Responders and grandstands were being put all around the track to help protect the fans from the debris from flying into the track. The we still see sometimes today that things get through that fence, but it's made remarkable uh, difference in, in keeping people safe. Lee has been racing all his life, and he knows the risks, he wants it. It's what keeps him alive. And Richard is cut out of the same cloth. I can't accept that. Oh, well, you'd better. After today, we are in for some tough times. Talking we nearly about broke. That. So, you know, the idea of these guys being adrenaline junkies and get needing the Richard's thrill team. and needing to be on the edge of, of You're going uh, to have some life and death days sometimes ahead. Uh, in order to get that excitement. Um, you, you hear that a lot with race car drivers. I don't know if that's true so much now. I think there's been such a big emphasis on safety now that I think this idea that drivers isn't are exactly going out the there best time to announce okay it. with the fact that they might baby. die at any minute. I, I, I don't think that's true anymore. I, well, I think if there's a, a I significant am glad safety to know risk, that you and Richard I think have drivers been working nowadays generally speak together. up, but there was this mentality back in, I think, you know, maybe the 50s, 60s, even into the 70s, where drivers being killed wasn't as unusual as it is today and, and that was part of the risk and also part of the glamour of the sport they were like modern day gladiators why don't you food i just got a call from nascar this afternoon after the race they drove me off the circuit turn it off why trying to organize the drivers we've all been trying to organize yeah but uh he's the one who told them i started it they can't do that to you curtis well, they've done it. One well, tired, faded, old so land. So, you know, earlier we saw the drivers trying to get together and organize and union meetings. Be simple, isn't it? Um, NASCAR found see? out about it and He's basically mine kicked too. him out. Uh, look, uh, to compete, uh, you get hurt. We all know that. Uh, Betty competed and. Uh, got hurt. Happened to any of us. You're right, Caller. It can happen to any of us. Sure, glad when you come here and start no fight. Well, he could have had accidents, you know. Yeah. I'm glad you did because you found such a better man. Yeah, he's got to teach us pretty good man. You know, in the early days of racing, it didn't end with a checkered flag sometimes. If you rough somebody up on the track, sometimes they were waiting for you in the parking lot. In this case, they were waiting for him at the, uh, at the bar afterwards. So. so at this point, this is where really it starts to become Richard's career. It starts to shift from uh, Lee being the big name in, in the Petty organization and, and Richard kind of taking over as the, as, as the main driver. And you see that classic you know, Petty Blue and Richard starting to rack up the wins. Of course, he ended up winning uh, 200 races in his career. Nobody's ever even gotten close to that since in terms of uh, records. It's I think it's going to be tough to break that record someday. There's so much parody in the sport nowadays that I just don't think they're going to allow anyone to get that dominant. And also, he was around for a very long time, and he was very good for a very long time. It's been about a year and a half since Daddy had his wreck, and he's talking about driving again. What I hear, uh, he can't handle it. You're right. But I don't want to be the one that has to tell him, but I think you can. Mm -hmm. Listen. I have driven, and I've seen many more times this tailpipe than he's seen of mine. Uh-uh. I'm not going to talk to him. You can do it, Curtis. You're the only one that can. Just, just be gentle. You know, something Campbell, I'll point out in this, brought, obviously Richard yeah, Petty is not drop around an for actor, in the morning, take him I'm not going to say that just, uh, that isn't obvious know, from, the, from the film. Um, but, you know, he does a serviceable job. This is not really a... Really believe he'll be happy to see me. This is not a... Heck a, yeah, the whole crowd a, a big be glad budget to see you. film with a 
Just change your you know, shirt. Big name production crew. It's at least as good as anything Shaquille O'Neal has done. So. Well, it's been going right. two hours. Don't give babies bananas. So this is a point where Lee Petty has recovered from his injuries and wants to go racing again. Uh, but uh, his family doesn't think he should. with a cane but still yeah. won the race are you two having fun oh the real truth is that neither of us are what we once were so that's it that's all that's the end of it so he's making the decision to give up racing. Mr. Petty? Guess he just wanted to take a little nap. Never could wake him up. Except your driving scares the daylights out of me sometimes. Me too. Sometimes. Well, man's got to do I can say I've gotten the same got feedback from my wife as well. This was the STP on the car there. This was the point in his career where he started that really, really famous relationship with STP. The thing is now, um, remarkably, as much as everyone still thinks of him, you know, as being tied to that brand for so long. You know, you ought to marry that girl. Uh, his team I actually did. now uh, That's right, you did, didn't you? uses uh, the same oil we do, yeah, Performance you did Plus. Yeah, uh, In all fact, there's actually done. a Richard Petty well, edition of Performance quite. Plus motor not oil. Quite. So, um, well, that was an, an amazing there, the hall, uh, cars in. piece of news when I found out that he was switching because it was just hard to believe that he would leave anybody leave STP for anybody. That's not what I'm talking so about. When, uh, talking about Charlotte. When we were uh, about informed that he was going to well, be switching over to the same brand of oil that we've been using, that was a big deal. That was a surprising announcement. I had never won in Charlotte. All right, son, nobody wins them all. Well, I can be the first. Well, if you want it, you go on out and get it. You come, and uh, maybe I will. I told you, I don't race, and I don't watch races. Now, how many times do I have to tell you that? I've heard this before from, from other athletes as well, that once they retire from the sport, they have a really tough time watching it because they've never been in a position of seeing it from that spectator point of view um, or perhaps that they just can't well, what uh, it's what I did, maybe it's, it's still hard for them I to accept that they're not in the sport anymore himself. so maybe watching it is painful for some people sharp. but uh, I think for some people it's him. just they're just him not used Maurice. to it it's just if they're Charlotte, not in the car they, they can't sit there and watch it they get maybe anxious you or whatever so them? Um, and they it's there. not a situation I've ever run into. Now you um, owe him, Lee. Owe him. So I don't, I don't know exactly him. what it's like for each driver, but I might have heard other uh, drivers and I athletes in other sports good. talk about that as well. Once they retire, they can't just sit in the stands and watch, or they can't just oh, watch him. it on TV anymore. It's just interesting because they know they still paid. love the sport. Lee, we're not talking about debt. They just can't make that transition. Down inside you, you ain't quit. Oh, you think you have? You haven't. You still want to be first. Well, you are the best man I ever knew. 
But you can't be first no more. And you can't quit. A lot of this film seems like it's, it's based more on Lee than it is Richard. And it's a mighty poor place uh, for and I, to live. I noticed the copy that we have is called you ever want to have 43, The Petty Story. You are um, going I've to seen other versions of it where it was Richard. referred to as The Richard Petty Story. But it it almost does feel almost as much like it's the Lee Petty Story as it does uh, the Richard Petty Story. At least up to this point in the film. Um, it really has covered well, like these... I don't you know, know the, the majority of his, his career. Um, obviously, in terms of Richard, it's covering his, you know, generally his entire life. Uh, but we've, we have covered a lot of the, the Lee Petty story as well. So it's interesting. Because I don't know a lot about Lee Petty. Um, I know the name, but he was well before my time. So it's interesting watching this film and seeing that it addresses his story as well as Richard as we a chance to see what his career was like and how it played out. Now, I don't know how factually accurate this movie is. I'm going to have to dig through some, some history to find out whether or not this film really nailed a lot of these facts down. But um, Every man but I imagine with the family being involved in it that they probably made an effort to be, to be accurate. Uh, the old uh, candy striped uniforms. Let a young heart discover what a wiser heart knows. Passing the drinks to, to the driver. Was <laughs> that a product placement? having this intermission of the film for this Pepsi commercial. You know, we mentioned the drivers not having the Nomex fire suits at this point in history. Um, although they were starting, you do notice that they are starting to have more purpose-built suits. Um, Probably at this point, still made out of cotton, I imagine. Um, but you see the crew members essentially just wearing uh, short sleeve shirts. You will still see uh, on practice days, um, you will see crew members not wearing full, full fire suits. And I'm, I'm kind of surprised at that this day and age. A little bit more Pepsi. Um, but yeah, I'm surprised that uh, I would think that any time. Is that the end? Wow. So I mentioned. <laughs> So I mentioned that, you know, there was a lot left in Petty's career at the time this movie was made in 1972. Um, yeah, they, uh, that was kind of an abrupt ending. It, it, I, it really, this really did feel like it was more the Lee Petty story than the Richard Petty story. Uh, because it sort of starts with Richard getting that car. I'm sorry, uh, starts with Lee getting that car. And then... About the time he retires, that's kind of the end of the movie, and there's a little bit of, you know, Richard kind of taking over and starting to win races. Um, but it doesn't really touch much on Richard's championships. Um, it just, it was so early in his career. Um, he, he hadn't begun to do uh, a lot of the, you know, to break a lot of the records that he would break the seven championships, 200 wins. There's so much of that was still left to go at the point that this movie was made. Um, it's it's considered, you know, a biography of, of Richard Petty, but really it's more Lee Petty. Um, I mean, the, the fact that it ends, you know, Lee Petty retires and the movie just sort of abruptly ends at that point. <coughs> you know, and, and as I watched it, it really felt like Darren McGavin's character was sort of the main character. Um, Lee kind of the first half of the movie he's in the hospital most of the time so except for the flashback scenes so um not a not a bad movie I mean it's it's this was not a major release this isn't Days of Thunder it, it's I, I didn't even know this movie existed I don't know if you'd call this a a B movie um you know it's it's obviously something that was made on the cheap 
Um, but uh, I think it's interesting to get a look at what it was like in the early part of his life. I mean, it, um, you know, what it was like for Richard growing up and, you know, living in a, a being born into a racing family. And um, I, I also think it's, it's cool for people that are, are younger now to get a little bit of a glimpse into what NASCAR looked like in the, the 50s and 60s and 70s and, and how different it was. Even in the course of this film, you see, you know, how much it changed from the beginning of the film to the end of the film, how much the cars changed, how much the, you know, the suits that the drivers wore changed. Uh, you know, essentially racing on what seemed like kind of dirt roads and then progressing to, you know, to these purpose-built tracks um, like, you know, Daytona and Charlotte uh, that look a lot more... Uh, like what you would see on, on television today. So it's interesting. It's an interesting film. It's not a, it's not a, a high grade, high quality film. Um, but I think the the actors like McGavin and some of the other uh, uh, actors that, that are real actors did a very good job in the film. I, I thought Richard did okay. Um, for a guy who's not an actor, uh, I, I thought he he did all right. Um, but. Uh, it was a little weird seeing some scenes early in the movie where I think he was supposed to be a lot younger than he obviously was. Um, and it's a little weird. It seemed like he was not that far off in age between himself and, and, and McGavin playing his father. So it was like, yeah, his father and son, but they seem like they, they seem almost more like older brother and younger brother in terms of their age difference. So, um, so that was, that's always a little weird, but you know, you get that. Some, um, anytime you play yourself in a biopic um, and you cover a you know that kind of period of time where you were younger but you don't have somebody to play you as your younger self um, obviously the extreme situation would have been the um, uh, the Howard Stern film where um, he played himself from beginning to end uh, as his uh, current age um, but it was that was done intentionally, and I think he just sort of bought into it. Where here they were making an attempt to get children to play him when he was a child, and um, but you know even I think once they got into like his teenage years, I mean they just had him in the scene, and he's like, okay, you're clearly older than that. So that was a little weird, kind of takes you out of the scene a little bit. But uh, but all in all, I enjoyed it. It's not bad. I mean, this is the sort of thing you're gonna buy at the store for a couple of dollars. I think it's uh, the double feature, I think, was maybe 10 bucks on Amazon. Um, I'm not sure I want to pay 10 bucks for it, even with the, the wrestler on it as the second film on the double feature. Um, but it's okay. If you could pick this thing up for, you know, in the $5 bin someplace and you're a racing fan or, or you're a, a fan of the petties, it's an interesting thing to have on the shelf. Uh, my wife got this for me. I think this was a stocking stuffer one, one Christmas, and I, I'm just now watching it. So it was years ago, and, uh, you know, we uh, just put it on the shelf and we collected dust, and I decided to pull it out for this video. So, you know, it was interesting. Um, check it out. I'll put, the, I'll put the link to the video on Amazon in the description below. Okay, well, that's our uh, first viewing of 43, The Richard Petty Story. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, it takes a little while to go through and, and watch a whole movie. It takes a little while to film one of these because you have to watch the whole movie and then you have to essentially watch it again when you edit it. So I don't know how many of these we're going to do if it gets into longer films. But there's some interesting documentaries out there uh, that I thought it might be interesting to, to give people uh, um, some information on. So... Um, I said this was actually recommended in, in reference to a, a documentary about uh, track safety workers, which, as many of you know by now, I, I do some track safety work on the side. So uh, if that's something that you guys uh, are interested in, uh, go ahead and give this video a like, and, and that'll tell me that you like this kind of stuff, and, and we'll go ahead and do more of these. We've also got uh, some other stuff, Formula One-related stuff and some NASCAR-related stuff that we could, you know, pop in the DVD player and uh, and, and give a look to. So. If that sounds interesting to you, just, just let us know. Like I said, hit the like button. And uh, if I see that this video is getting some likes, then you know we'll go ahead and, and, and do more of these. And if not, we'll go back to, uh, to just doing um, our normal content. So I don't know what our normal content is anymore, though. <laughs> We've been doing a little bit of everything uh, here in the, uh, the extended off season of 2020. So 
um, but uh, but we have we have some other videos that we want to do as well. So you let us know what you want to see, and we'll try and bring you the topics that, that interest you guys the most. So so that's all I've got for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope everyone is doing well. Take care, and we'll see you on the next lap.